Hi, my name is Todd Berzer with Kivol Product Management, and this is Product Management 101 and our lecture on road mapping. If you recall, over the past few lectures, we've been looking at the work of product management across four different key areas. So market intelligence, so market, customer, competitive analysis, strategy, strategy development, new product development, and life cycle management. And in this set of lectures, we're going to talk about new product development. And we're going to break it up into three different components. So first is road mapping, then the actual development of those new products and services, and then launch. In this lecture, we're going to look at road mapping. And in particular, we're going to look at the process, the overall process of new product development. Uh, what are road maps? Um, why do road maps? Uh, kind of what the product managers, you know, what the product manager's role is in the development of road maps. And then we'll talk about how you actually develop these roadmaps and then the ongoing evolution and maintenance and management of product and service roadmaps. All right, let's look at the process of new product development. So there's a number of precursors to new product development to do it right. Um, all of the market intelligence that you guys have done that we, that we talked about in terms of market, customer, competitive analysis, all of that work serves as a backdrop and a precursor to uh, you know intelligent new product design and then also strategy so you want to know kind of you, you want to know where you're going uh, where your company's going where your group's going where you want to take your product group and then a technology assessment and this is typically done together with our research and development or research and development leads that and then also kind of cross-functional innovation ideas that you've gathered so all of this feeds into road mapping and new product development and launch. So we start with road mapping. We're going to do that in this lecture. The road mapping sets the stage for the development of a particular new product or a service. And that, of course, sets the stage for launch out into the market. So that's the process, the top level process for new product development. Let's take a look at road mapping and, and, and in particular, what, what are road maps? So road maps are time-based charts uh, that show a planned evolution of a product or a service. And why, why would you want to do them? Well, you know, a lot of companies skip this step. They just go straight to new product development or new service development. You know, that, that, that I think is a mistake. Um, it's important to decide where you want to take your technology investments, where you want to take your new product development investments and prioritize those and say, these are what we want to do. And this is our, our, our vision of how our products and services roll out over time. So you end up with prioritized technology investments that kind of do what you want to do as opposed to just kind of what uh, you, you've kind of collected over time. And then, you know, the, the result is what product managers want to do, and that's breakthrough market leading products and services. And, and the consequence of that is long term sustained competitive advantage. Roadmaps, road mapping is a critical step. It's often one that's overlooked by companies. So as a product manager, what is our role in this process? So, you know, developing roadmaps should be a joint effort. It should be jointly led by product management and your research and development counterparts, whoever's developing your products and services. So it should be jointly led. If your R&D teams are not stepping forward, uh, if your management is not, if they're not stepping forward, then, then you need to do so. Product management needs to do so. Let's take it step by step. So road mapping. The first step is that you establish a road mapping team. So this is a small team of senior product managers, maybe yourself and your R&D staff. You establish a small road mapping team, might be three to four to five, six people, something. It's a fairly small set of people that are really taking a focused look at this. Then you review your market intelligence. All that work we talked about earlier, some market growth, what's your market growth, what are the customer trends, where do you think your competitors are going, uh, what's happening to uh, the technology, uh, and also you work with you, you, you review your strategy. What are you doing with your, your top level company strategy, your, uh, your business unit strategy, your product group strategy? All of that helps guide roadmap thinking. And then also, you know, you're collecting your innovation ideas. This can come from a lot of sources, from your, your research and development counterparts, from, from product management, from your from your, your, mark, your, your outbound marketing teams, from uh, your sales teams, from manufacturing, lots of sources for innovation ideas. You start by reviewing that, and then you get on a whiteboard and you start sketching this out. So, you know, where do we think we're gonna take our products and services over time? 
You just sketch it all out. And we'll talk about this in a minute, what this looks like. And then you develop a final version. Now, you're not done here with these four steps. You still need to manage these roadmaps and evolve them uh, over time. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's roadmapping step by step. Let's go ahead and dig in. So let's start. A roadmap can look like this. So you've got the time-based element on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we're going to divide it up into three different levels. So the first is kind of technology and platform. The second is products and services. And the third is market and application. Okay, this is typical format. I'm just going to do it in kind of a theoretical level first, then we'll get to some specifics. But this is a typical format for a roadmap. So technology and platform, what do we mean by that? So I, I mentioned earlier that I had worked for Hewlett Packard for a number of years, HP. Uh, I was a product manager in, in, the, in, you know, in the color laser group. So you can think about a color laser printer. So strip away the outside plastic, strip away um, everything that you see when you look at a, at a color laser printer and think about the, the core engine, the core technology that's in there. That's your technology and your platform. You've got an engine, you've got an electrophotographic the technology that's there, it's got a certain, you know, uh, print quality, it's got a certain speed. That's a core technology platform, and then you develop products and services off of that. So if we're still going with the printer example, the color laser printer, you might develop an, an office printer. You might also develop a multifunction printer that's got copying, uh, scanning, uh, and, and printing. So you can develop different products and services off that, and then that allows you to enter a market or an application. So in this case, maybe you're, you're targeting small businesses uh, worldwide, or maybe you know, maybe you've developed something specific for you know the small business segment in China. So these are this is kind of the flow. You start with technology and platform. You go to products and services you know that are built off that technology and platform, and then you go to markets and application that those products and services allow you to reach. And this is over time. So, you know, your technology, let's say that color laser printer engine we're talking about, you may do the next rev in a couple of years. Uh, so you've got that here in your technology and platform that may allow you to replace the products that you've got in the market with a new set of products. And that may allow you to go into a, a more specific or, or, or a separate market segment uh, that you didn't really have the products and service for before. I'm hoping all this is making sense. This is kind of at a top level what road mapping looks like. So there's a number of very good tools that can help you do this road mapping. Uh, one of the tools was developed by the Albright Strategy Group. It's an Excel add-in. Uh, you can download it. Um, it. I'd recommend this one. They did, some, they did some nice work with this. It does include, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second, but it does include sourcing, which is an important element of thinking about road mapping. So if you're really going to focus your research and development dollars, energies, you really want to focus them on the stuff that's going to give you critical competitive competitive advantages. So you want to you want to decide pretty criti critically what you want to develop internally, what you want to just buy from a supplier, what maybe you want to partner together with another company to develop, uh, and then we've got this other category as well, research. Maybe it's just something you just don't know. It's out in the future. You need to think about this one a little bit. So there's some strategy element or there's some sourcing elements as part of this road mapping as well. So let's take a look at what this tool can look like. So if you if you use this Excel add-in and you kind of put your products in, you can develop a, a roadmap that might look something like this. So the same thing as we looked for, kind of we looked at conceptually before, technology and platform on the bottom, products and services above that, and market and application. So let's go back to, let's use another example. We talked about the color laser example earlier. Let's switch examples here. Let's think about the, uh, the steel case gesture chairs that we talked about earlier. Now think about a chair, so, and, and the gesture chair, which is all, you know, strip away the outer covering, the fabric on the outside, strip away in your mind the, the foam padding. That's not really part of the technology and platform. Let's get down to what a chair looks like in its guts. So it's probably a steel and plastic frame that's got a lot of levers, adjustments, that's your core technology. So they would have a, a gesture, you know, Steelcase has a gesture kind of technology or platform that they're building a number of chairs off of. And here we called that core technology A. So that if in Steelcase's uh, example, that's, that's their gesture chair. Then they've developed a number of products off, to, uh, off that. So they developed the whole gesture product line. 
you know, I'm sure that they've got different configurations with different foam, different coverings. Maybe it's a leather covering, maybe it's a fabric covering, different colors. They've developed different products off that core technology platform. And they may replace those over time. So, you know, over time, you know, they may develop, you know, separate products or, or replacement chairs, you know, with improvements. And they may add services to that. So, you know, maybe there is a service where uh, that they that they're looking into where they want to uh, manage the office furniture of of institutions, libraries, whatever, and that includes these chairs, and that allows them these products and services allow them to reach out to a market, you know, the, the office chair market or the institutional chair market, and then maybe they've got another technology coming, another core technology that really focuses on the ergonomic aspects of of sitting of chairs. You know, maybe that's core technology B. That leads to some new products uh, or some new products and new services. And that in turn allows them to reach out to a different market, market maybe the full ergonomic market uh, for, for office chairs. So that's an example, kind of roadmap example. When you use the, the kind of Excel add-in that we talked about, you'll, you can develop for your own products and services a roadmap that looks like this. All right, a few other things on roadmaps. Uh, you want to use these roadmaps to plan resources, so people and money. So if you're looking over time, you've got these products coming, you know it's going to, you've got a product coming out in 2015, you know it's going to take a year to develop, then you need to plan for that during the year of 2014. So people and money, you set aside, uh, and then the new product, then the roadmap will trigger new product development. So we know this is coming up, we know when we have to ready, we have it ready for, you know, in 2016 or whatever. You know, at, this, at a certain time period, R&D kicks off, mark product ma management kicks in, uh, and, and you guys are off and running in terms of new product development. Now, we're going to talk about that next, but whenever you do new product development, you should, you should be starting with a product or service that's on an established roadmap. And then you need to keep these updated. So if you just do it once, if you get your small road mapping team together once and do this, um, you know, it's going to get stale. It's going to get outdated over time. There's going to be competitive entrants. You're going to find out new things about your own technology, what's working in the market, what's not. You need to review. You need to update. You need to evolve these roadmaps. You probably do it over every three to six months. All right, so that's road mapping. Let's just take a look, quick review of the concepts that we've talked about in this lecture. We talked about the process of new product development. You start with road mapping, uh, you move into new product development, and then you move into launch. Roadmaps show the product and service evolution over time, and they've got a number of benefits. They help you prioritize your technology investments. They lead to breakthrough products and services and allow you, at the end of the day, to get ahead of your competition, long-term competitive advantage. You need to review, update these every three to six months. All right, next up is new product development. Uh, and we'll talk to you then.